Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we have a full value for money comparison between the AMD Ryzen 5 2600 going up against the Intel i5-8400 to see which one is better value. So let's jump right into it then with the specs of these two CPUs. So we'll start with the Intel CPU then, the 8400. So this is a 6-core, six 6-thread, six 14 nanometer Coffee Lake CPU coming in with a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4 gigahertz. The Ryzen 5 2600 is a 6-core, 12-thread, 12, 12 nanometer Ryzen 2 CPU coming in with a 3.4 gigahertz base clock and a 3.9 gigahertz boost clock. So what that means is that the 2600 here has a higher base clock than the 8400, but a slightly lower boost clock. Although to be fair to the 8400, you'll never see it go down to like 2.8 gigahertz unless there's some serious thermal throttling or something else going on. Most of the time it seems to sit around 3.8 gigahertz. Maybe you see it go down to like 3.7, but most of the time it's, it's quite up there. Uh, so you never see it quite come down quite that low. So now let's talk about the test rigs then, and we'll look at the AMD test rig first. So I tested the 2600 with the MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon that I recently reviewed. This is a good review, guys. You want to check that out. I'll put it in the description down below as it's a fantastic X470. And I tested the 8400 with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon. So matching motherboards, just to make it even more fair. Now, as far as the GPU went, I tested both of them with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti. As far as memory goes, I tested them both with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 memory set at 3600 MHz for all the tests, and both were using the Arctic Freezer 33 120mm air cooler. So let's move over and talk about the overclocking and the temperatures then. So not much to do here with the 8400. This is a locked CPU, so it means you cannot overclock it. I know some people will say you can a little bit, but for the sake of making this video easy to follow, uh, it does not have an unlocked multiplier in the traditional sense, so you cannot overclock it. It is a locked CPU for all intents and purposes. The 2600, on the other hand, is fully unlocked, which means you can overclock it as high as you like, which is a really good thing. I managed to get the 2600 I had up to 4.1 gigahertz on all six cores, which is a solid overclock, now I will say that it took a lot of voltage to get it there, a lot more than I usually have to, but that may just be the silicon lottery and I didn't get a particularly good 2600. Both of these are retail uh, products by the way, they weren't sent to me by either company. So yeah, 4.1 gigahertz on the 2600, still a solid overclock even if it needed a bit of voltage to get there. And then temperatures wise, I ran the Ida 64 CPU stress test for 5 minutes and took the highest temperature and as you guys can see, they were very, very close at stock speeds within the margin of error. But once you overclock the 2600, it does get a bit more toasty. However, that's just fine, 79 degrees. That really isn't a problem. Now let's go over to the benchmarking. And this was really interesting, as you would imagine, because these two CPUs are basically attacking the same price point. Uh, they're quite similar in a lot of ways. The 2600 does have the extra threads, which, makes, uh, which helps. But as you'll see, the 8400 with its, basically its design, it does a bit better in the gaming. But let's jump right in and see how the two CPUs perform.
we're back. So what do we make of the benchmarks then? Well, when it comes to productivity, even the 2600 at stock speeds absolutely destroys the 8400. It's not even really that close. Uh, once it's overclocked, it even pulls a bigger gap in terms of productivity. So if you're looking to build like, I don't know, a value for money workstation rig or something like that, then you'll definitely be wanting to look more at the 2600 because you can see there the difference. The main one I like to look at for productivity stuff is the handbrake render times. And you see the 2600 did a very good job there. However, to be fair to the 8400, when it came to gaming, it opened up a decent gap there, especially compared to the stock 2600. Once the 2600 was overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz, it did close in on that gap quite a bit, uh, but it, it wasn't enough to catch the 8400. So in terms of gaming, the 8400 is the winner, and since most of you guys are probably gonna be buying the CPU for gaming, uh, I would say the 8400 then wins the benchmarks. However, let's take it to the conclusion then and bring all the other factors involved in buying a value for money CPU. So we'll start with the prices of the CPUs themselves. So right now at Playtech uh, here in New Zealand, you can pick up the i5-8400 for 285 New Zealand dollars. And it does come with its little box cooler, which is fine since it's a locked CPU and it'll do you just fine. The Ryzen 5 2600 right now at Playtech comes in at 309 New Zealand dollars. And it comes with the Wraith Spire cooler, which is okay, once again, if you were just running at stock uh, speeds, it would be just fine, but for overclocking, you're not gonna get to 4.1 with the Wraith Spire, put it that way. So, not really ideal, and a bit of a downgrade from the previous generation uh, Ryzen 1600, which came with a Wraith Spire. So, I tested with high-speed memory. That's because a lot of people used to complain that I would run my memory speeds at 2933 for the Ryzen versus Intel tests. I thought that was pretty reasonable, but since people were complaining, I decided to run higher speed memory. But I still think it's a bit overkill because memory prices are crazy right now and most people buying value for money CPUs are not gonna invest in really high speed memory. And with slower speed memory, you'll find that impacts the performance much more on the Ryzen CPU than it does on the 8400. So you gotta you know, take that into consideration also. Then when we go over to motherboards, B360 motherboards, like you would probably want to run with the 8400 here in New Zealand right now, go for about $170. B350 motherboards, maybe what you'd like to pair with the 2600, go for about the same price, maybe a little bit less depending on the model. If you want to go to an X470 with the uh, 2600, which is the only new generation uh, Ryzen motherboard you can get, we can't get B450s right now as of making this video, uh, that will cost you quite a bit more and it probably wouldn't really be worth it to go for an X470 with a 2600 uh, from my perspective anyway, um, especially considering that with an 8400 here you could get a nice B360 for quite a bit less. Not only that, but also if you're planning on overclocking the 2600, you're going to need to buy an aftermarket cooler. Granted, you could pick up a Wraith Spire or something like that from your local computer store if you're lucky. You could ask for one and maybe buy it for $5 and that would fix it. But for many people, that may not be an option and you'll have to buy yourself like a cheap 120 millimeter air cooler or something like that, in which case the price difference all up will be more expensive for the 2600 than the 8400. Now I know what you're gonna say, probably already smashing your keyboard, but Kevin, you know, the 2600 and AM4, you know, you got the upgrade path. You, you don't have to always upgrade with the 8400. And that is true, it's true. However, most people buying a CPU buy for right now. Some people, more enthusiast types will, you know, buy for the future. But a lot of people are just wanting to upgrade the computer, wanting to buy a new computer, build a new computer, and they're just looking for the best parts right now. And for those people, in terms of overall everything we've discussed in this video, I would say go for the 8400. Many of you, that's an unpopular opinion, especially among tech reviewers, but I would go for the 8400. Now before you get grumpy, I listed everything before, so if you were tuning in, you would understand what my reasoning is for that. So out of these two, remember I'm talking about these two, I would personally go for the 8400. But, 
if we're talking about all CPUs right now, including all the other Ryzen 2s out there right now, I would go for the 2600X. It's a lot better value when you consider what you get with the 2600. You pay a little bit more and you get the 2600X. You get a better cooler, much better speeds out of the box. And I just find it to be the better value CPU overall. And that's probably what I would go for. But I compare, you know, I do the showdowns comparing one CPU to another. And for me, as of right now, I would go for the 8400. But hey, that is just me. And, you know, I'm no stranger to having unpopular opinions on my channel. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you do disagree with me, lay out your logical argument. I mean, I'm, you know, I have my opinions, but you guys have yours too. And maybe you can make a better case for the 2600 than I can, especially in regards to the upgrade path, which is, you know, a pretty viable thing. So let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.